Okay. So thank you, thank you everyone for coming. Um, yeah, by now I think today we hit uh, 200 teams who've signed up officially for the um, for the competition. Um, uh, many of which are, are, are solo participants, of course. But um, yeah, it's a great collection of people from small and big companies. Um, and yeah, we've been really looking forward to um, uh, to seeing what comes out of the competition and seeing all of the kind of interesting and exciting projects you all get up to. Um, so this session is basically just a, a, a general launch event. We wanted to give a bit of context about why on earth we're doing the competition in the first place um, and a little bit of information about ZenML. Um, so uh, yeah, first of all, I'd turn it over to, to uh, Hamza to talk a little bit about that. And then uh, afterwards, I'll uh, get into some uh, details and specifics of a kind of um, more practical matters relating to the competition. So Hamza, take it from here. All right, thank you, Alex, so much. Um, I'm equally excited to see everyone in the call, and I'm sure those people who are watching uh, the video um, after the fact. Um, so I'll just maybe start off with a introduction about ZenML and why we're doing the entire MLOps competition. So uh, let's do it. I'm Hamza Tahir. I'm one of the co-founders at ZenML, um, and I guess it it would really Pay to understand who we are. So you can see me in the middle of the of the picture here, uh, in in the lovely lake at Amerze, um, somewhere close to Munich, Germany. This is where the main offices of ZenML are. However, our team is spread out uh, across the world. So uh, we do have a remote friendly um, culture, and that's why we have so many awesome people from all around the world. Um, we are currently, as of speaking, twelve people strong. Um, and it's very, very exciting to, to be working with everyone at the ZenML team. It is a huge task that we have undertaken. Um, ZenML itself is, was founded on the basis of scratching our own itch. So we, we had our own problems with ZenML uh, solved, basically productionalizing machine learning and all the things that you will uh, hear about in a few minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. And itself like we were able to raise a seed round uh about 10 to 11 months ago um and with the venture backing we are now the core maintainers of the open source zenimal project uh, and we are very proud to be shepherding this project through the open source space um so yeah so that's a brief introduction to who we are for those of you who didn't know uh, i thought that it would be nice to put some faces to to the people behind zenimal and the people you'll be communicating with um, as you're going to take the month of MLOps competition. Right, next up, um, maybe it would make sense to talk about the problem that ZenML um, purports to solve, um, because I think this will get us a better understanding of why ZenML is out there in the first place and why we're building it. I know a lot of you are new entrants into the field of MLOps, and some of you are just very experienced already. Um, but I'm sure you must have stumbled upon the problem that MLOps itself solves, which is productionizing machine learning. Uh, but our view of the world is that MLOps currently is still a broken process. And one of the reasons why this is the case is there are so many different tools and personas that span the entire pipeline. So there's actually a lot of friction between relevant stakeholders within the machine learning world. So if you think about machine learning and how it develops, in production, you have the experimentation phase um, where you where you do where you consume things, perhaps upstream from the ETL ELT engineering data engineers, and then you have the downstream productionization and maintenance phase, which on all of these phases are done by different people using different tools, different APIs, and that leads to a whole bunch of mess. Um, and that is the core problem that we hope to solve with Xenomel. So the solution to this would be to implement a unified interface which starts as early as possible in the process and standardize the entire process. So with, uh, what we think the world should look like uh, here at ZenML is there should be a single source of truth that everybody can rely on, no matter what tools you're using, no matter what you're doing, the same API that from people from data scientists persona to ML engineers to even data engineers can use and rely on. And if you look at the next slide, this would be 
I think we missed one. Or yeah, I think there was one. Yes, exactly. So this is the like like what ZenML is. So ZenML is an extensible open source framework to create a unified pipeline interface specifically for ML ops pipelines. So it's very important to understand, I think, a few things about ZenML. The first is that it is a framework. It is something that is meant to be extended, something that is meant to be used as a, as a base for, for your work. Um, it has a lot of built-in uh, things which you can use off the shelf, but it is meant to be tinkered with. And like, like that's why it lends itself nicely to a competition uh, where you have to be creative. And it unifies the pipeline in the MLOps pipeline sense. So it does span the MLOps pipeline, so meaning from experimentation to deployment to beyond. And like whatever tool and interfaces it touches, it tries to unify it into one single umbrella and present the same, the same sort of language to every persona that is involved in that journey. Um, and looking at it from another way, if you look at the 101 MLOps uh, landscape um, diagram, this is a bit manipulated from the classic one. It also uh, talks about feature stores and training and monitoring. If you look at this landscape, you touch so many things, including the, the actual training code. And with ZenML, what you want to do is bind them together. So to sort of be the highway, the glue that brings all these things together. Um, and that is essentially the goal of ZenML. So while while you are going into the realms of this competition and productionalizing your your pipelines and and building them out, always keep in mind that what ZenML would give you is sort of the glue that would bind and stitch things together uh, in order that you have a simple unified interface which is reproducible end to end. Right, so so this is this is the problem space that ZenML would add value to your MLOps stacks in. Right, um, moving on, um, what what does how does ZenML do this? Well, there are two main interfaces for for ZenML. I'm sure many of you already know this if you played with it. The first is pipelines, so you do create pipelines in in Python code, which are simple functions, and the second is stacks. Uh, while pipelines define the what and like what exactly happens in the workflow, in the next slide you'll see stacks basically connect pipelines um, to the relevant infrastructure and tools behind. Um, so if you disconnect the tools and the infrastructure in abstractions from the pipeline itself, it creates this two-way system where you can think about stacks differently from pipelines and then connect them together using this service uh, that ZenML provides. Um, and, and these two things are going to be especially important as you go into the competition. So like maybe um, we go to the next slide. So, the, so this shows an exemplary workflow um, of like ZenML being in the middle and you have ML engineers and data scientists writing pipelines and maybe the ops people writing the stacks, and then ZenML brings it all together in a dashboard and uh, deploying the pipelines and, and the infrastructure behind it. So for those of you who didn't know what ZenML was and where it was in the ecosystem, I, I thought I would just um, elucidate that or, or, or illuminate that in a, in a brief way. Right. So, um, as, as you will go along the competition, you will see that there are, like ZenML itself is a young project, so it's, it's now been around the block a year, and we're doing this for the first time with the competition. And, and of course, you might run into some roadblocks, and we, we didn't want to throw everyone into the deep end without talking about these roadblocks uh, explicitly. So um, I'll just maybe go over some of them which you might run into early. So first of all, ZenML itself launched the 0 0.20.0 version a few days ago, and we did undergo many breaking changes. Um, so you should expect that there will be some updates in the first week of the competition. So uh, if, you, if you do face um, some 
you break any changes, if you, if you do feel like the docs are slightly outdated or the Zen files project is, is a bit outdated, this is something that we're actively working on, on in the core team. It shouldn't disrupt you so much, but if there are things that slipped under the cracks, let us know on Slack. And also do keep upgrading ZenML um, versions as we go through this week, because this week is going to be the week where we sort of fix fix the the uh, the the bugs that leaked into the latest big release that we did. If if some of you followed that, uh, we would encourage you in the competition to start using 0.20.2 uh, as the as the latest ZenML version. And if there is a big breaking change, which there we don't expect it to be, but if there is one, we will have a proper migration guide, and we will we would make sure that the competition doesn't get disrupted because of these updates. Um, secondly, there are some stack components that do not have standard abstractions. So this is for those of you who have maybe read the talks. So for a lot of stack components like orchestrators, like step operators, we do have standard abstractions already, but there are some which lack them. So maybe the experiment tracking still needs a bit of work. So for those, so for those of you who go into the realms of ZenML, which uh, which do not have standard abstractions, then we encourage you to look at the concrete implementations of the integrations that are already existing. So for example, if you want to integrate your own experiment tracking service, let's say somebody comes in and they want to in, in, integrate with Neptune or Comet as, as the experiment tracker, which would be a really cool uh, showcase of, of, of the features of ZenML but they find the standard abstraction lacking, then we do ask you to look at what already exists, like ML flow and weights and biases, and sort of see and mimic the logic there. And the ZenML team will support you in these sorts of corner cases where the abstractions are a bit lacking. Um, and, and finally, there are certain features that are close by on the roadmap, but not yet released, uh, which you might also think about. Uh, I wanted to highlight some which are quite uh, cool and will be there soon, but maybe not in time for this competition. Um, so we have per step Docker builds. So building an image for a, on a step basis, not on a pipeline basis, hyperparameter tuning um, automatically integrated into ZenML. So of course you can do hyperparameter tuning within your pipeline using native libraries, but we don't have a neat integration yet uh, into something like Ray or Optuna. Um, that's on the horizon. And conditional steps and early stopping is often something that we're asked about, which we're also working on. Um, if, you, if you find anything lacking uh, like, um, in, in features with ZenML, the first thing you should do is look at the open roadmap. So it's uh, https zenmlio slash roadmap. Um, when you go there, you will see a list of features that are working on, things which will be released within the competition timeline and things uh, which will be a bit late. If you run into any things that you would like to implement, we would ask you to then sort of uh, put it inside the pipeline itself and bypass the framework. Um, if you wanted to showcase such an, such a things like hyperparameter tuning. <clears throat> cool, <clears throat> quickly going over the FAQs. So uh, apart from the limitations, I think what's important for the competition is to answer a few questions that everybody has about ZenML. So first of all, is ZenML a pipelining tool or an orchestrator? Um, as I showed you uh, a few minutes ago, ZenML puts pipelines at the center of the workflow, and it's one of the key concepts of ZenML. But we don't think of ourselves as a pipelining tool per se. Um, a classic orchestrator or a pipelining tool like Airflow or Flight or Qflow uh, is a component that is responsible for executing and managing the execution of a pipeline. And ZenML itself doesn't do that. It actually relies on tools like Airflow and Flight and Qflow to do exactly that. Uh, what ZenML does is offer something on top of those services that connect other tools together. So uh, I heard uh, this put very well from, from one of our community members. It's the experience layer of MLOps. So something that is connecting all the dots Build, like sort of lets you build these pipelines, but then eventually as the end target, it does deploy on these orchestrators. So you do need these orchestrators still with ZenML, but it makes the experience quite easy to integrate other things. So this is something that is important when you, when you especially for new users of ZenML to understand the difference. And this is why I wanted to highlight it. 
Question two, can I use tool X? How does tool Y integrate with ZenML? We have many documentation about all the standard tools. Um, and there are many tools that come out of the box. So you can look at all the resources that Alex will talk about in a few seconds. But if you find that your tool is missing, or you would particularly like to support a tool and put it as part of your stack, then we would love that you use the extensibility features of ZenML to actually add, add them in. Uh, the way you extend ZenML is basically two ways. You either write a stack component flavor, or you write standard steps or materializers. Uh, these are terms that you don't need to know about right now if you're not familiar, but uh, they actually are quite easy to do. And if you are in the course of the competition integrating new features or new tools, then that could be counting towards, um, towards your score. Finally, does ZenML support Mac M1? Uh, this is something that I especially put for M1 users. I know that there are many. Um, we do support uh, M M1. Well, actually, we don't support M1 natively, uh, but only through through uh, uh, Rosetta. So if you are running on a Mac M1, we ask you to run through Rosetta. This is how we do it internally for our M1 users, or to use Docker directly. We do have our base image that has an ML already installed that you can use it for. There is a known limitation with TensorFlow and ZenML with Mac M1. For those of you who, who want to use that together, let us know. Maybe we can figure out a solution. <clears throat> right. And uh, ha having been through all the slides, this is my last one. I think a lot of you might be wondering um, why are we hosting the month of MLOps? So, of course, I think for those of you who are here today, the benefit from your perspective might be clear, but I, I also wanted to make it clear why we're doing it. Um, well, there are many reasons. For example, offering a venue for creativity in the context of MLOps, uh, demystifying production scenarios with new kinds of designs and solutions, encouraging contribution to open source, uh, initiating a discussion around best practices, uh, lifting the curtain on end-to-end -end machine learning, and just showing off ZenML and what we've built in the last year on more, um, and, and wanting everyone in the community to check it out. But I think this is underlined by one of the main things that ZenML is trying to do is to create abstractions and standards. And simply, the vision of ZenML cannot be achieved with one team, with one silo. Uh, we, we have to do it together as an industry. Uh, our goal is that we come together and shape MLOps together. It is a very young field, and there are many, each and every one of you in the call today who are who are contributing to the competition, even if you're new to MLOps, could be the person or people to actually put forward the best practices of MLOps and to get standards across that will be used by uh, potentially millions of people in the future. Uh, and it, so we have we are in a unique point in time where we can shape the entire landscape, and this is why it's so cool to be able to to ha host an open competition with an open source tool that sort of integrates open source tooling across the MLOps landscape, so that we can have these conversations and we can make um, the entire ecosystem better and write about it and inform other people about what we learned in this entire month. So it's about learning together. It's about shaping things. And at the end, I would just say from my side, I will hand it over to Alex now. Uh, for all of you who are participating, good luck and may the best pipeline win. Cheers, Alex, back to you. Thank you, Hamza. Um, and yeah, that was a great um, way to just to set the scene for, for ZML. I'm going to be the practical one on the call, I guess. Um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about now is um, listed on our information page, uh, which um, if you're here, you probably will have seen that page, but um, uh, uh, we can um, we can circulate the link again. It's nml.io slash competition hyphen participants hyphen 2022. Um, so this is basically the place to go for, for all information and we keep it updated on a rolling basis. Um, but so I'm just going to talk through some of the practicalities uh, and at the end, uh, hopefully I can get, get done quickly and we can have a bit of time for, for your questions if, if anything I've talked about has either caused confusion or um, uh, yeah, or just, just wasn't mentioned. 
so the key dates of the competition um obviously we're all here october 10th it's the start um uh, the competition lasts for four weeks um all the way until uh the very last minute of november 6th uh, which is a sunday um so 11 59 um Euro european time uh, that's the final submission deadline i'll talk a little bit more about submission later um and then there's a final week afterwards where Basically, the judges are going through all of the submissions, um, and then we'll have a final uh, results ceremony. Um, in between now and November 6th, um, we've got these four weeks. Um, basically, the standard things on each week will be uh, office hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and we'll also have uh, regular community meetings uh, on Wednesdays. So these are points of time where um, you can kind of have uh, direct contact with with us on a call uh us being the zenml team um and uh yeah there are some kind of general uh, themes um which uh will encourage kind of people who are new to mlops and new to zenml to head down but really um the um what you end up doing during this month uh, depends a little bit on your experience um and the extent to which you want to follow our suggestions or not we don't mandate any particular um, timing or whatever if you want to cram everything in all into the final last week we wouldn't recommend that but um, that's uh, you know that's that's up to you to some extent um, I suspect uh, most if not all of you will have uh, seen and learned of our judges uh, already we've got a really great panel of external judges um, so Charles Fry from full stack deep learning Anthony Goldblum from from um, former uh, CEO of Kaggle and co-founder there, uh, Chip Huyen, um, who is kind of well known for her, her, her work and her writings uh, online, uh, also co-founder of Claypot AI, and uh, Goku Mohandas um, from Made With ML. Um, yeah, they all agreed to, 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 to be judges, and those are the people who are going to be taking a look at your uh, pipelines. We also have um, uh, our kind of internal judge, uh, Stefan, from our team, um, he will be um, uh, also helping out. So there'll be five people looking over the, the submissions um, uh, at the end of the, of the competition. And yeah, you'll mostly hear, of, hear from these people towards the end of the competition when you receive feedback on your submission um, and yeah, evaluating the things that, um, that you submit. Um, in terms of the rules and the judging criteria and so on, uh, there's a lot more specifics on the information page. I encourage you to uh, visit there um, and to, to to learn specifically on these these five points that um, uh, that the judge will be looking at. Whether you do what you say you're going to do in terms of the implementation, how creative your solution is, how mature it is. Um, you think of things like reproducibility and maintainability. Um, uh, in terms of what you you end up submitting, cost effectiveness, um, and the final presentation, of course. Um, uh, so there is a presentation element to what you do. It's not just simply submitting a, a GitHub repository. Uh, we do ask that you submit uh, alongside it some kind of either a blog or a video, um, uh, kind of explaining what you did and what you built uh, and the motivation behind that. Um, so we leave it up to you which uh, which combination of those uh, you you want to do, um, as well as a GitHub repository. It only needs to be public for the submission. Um, you can keep it private, private, of course, during the competition. Um, and the other, of course, the other big uh, um, big kind of prerequisite for for uh, participating in the competition is that you use ZenML for your pipelines. Um, we do have a code of contact. Code of conduct with uh, with ZenML, um, which generally kind of should should form the basis and the background for your interactions with each other and teammates and so on. Uh, uh, and then you know there is also um, some other kind of um, smaller sub sub rules and and, and things which I uh, encourage you to check out on the uh, competition information page. Notably, you know um, the um, uh the prohibition on plagiarism and copying other people's work um but i hope that um should should be self-evident um in terms of submissions um it's still early days uh, we're not expecting submissions final submissions for the competition until towards the end of the competition to be honest that's why we gave a few weeks because um um 
uh, gives you the opportunity to to kind of uh, make a more more interesting pipeline or a more interesting solve a more interesting problem. Um, we do have this final submission deadline, as I said, and there will be a submission form uh, which will be announced later on uh, and and distributed, and that will basically be um, a place for you to give the details of where your where your code is stored and where the, the presentation materials are stored uh, and so on. In terms of uh, teams, um, we will be sharing uh, later on this week, um, and I think probably on a rolling basis, as um, there may be people joining uh, next week as well. Uh, we'll share information on how to register your team, um, so the specific people who are going to be part of your, your group of people. Uh, you, your team can be anywhere between one and five, uh, five people. This is mainly so we know who to contact about the submissions that we receive. Um, where swag should be sent, um, and of course, in the case that you you end up winning, uh, where we can send the the, the prize money and so on. Um, if you are still looking for team members, um, we have the competition underscore twenty two channel on Slack. Uh, I know some of you um, have uh, already started kind of reaching out and, and um, finding other team members there, so we we would recommend that. Um, and we do have um, you know as of as of last week with the with the new release, we have collaboration features of XML, which we'd encourage you to use. Um, so uh, you can share your stacks that Hamza was talking about earlier. Uh, you can view what your team are up to using the dashboard. Um, all of this is explained in the documentation. And if you have any problems deploying your shared um, your shared XML server, uh, please do let us know. But uh, yeah, this is really uh, intended to, um, um, yeah, to facilitate collaboration uh, among you as a team. Uh, in terms of feedback you'll be getting from, from us, um, we do have the Competition 22 uh, Slack channel, which we'd really encourage you to post any of your questions and um, things which are coming up while, uh, while you're working on the competition. We do have the office hours with the ZML team. These are twice a week um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, as I mentioned. Um, but yeah, probably your, your main interaction and point of call uh, on a kind of a more regular basis will be through the, uh, through the Slack channel, um, uh, yeah, as well as, as well as the office hours. Um, and um, yeah. And I just wanted to give you a kind of a very quick overview of some of the resources, because I'm sure many of you are kind of eager to get started, um, and I just wanted to point people people in the right direction. We have a kind of a wealth of information um, available that we've worked on uh, at ZNML. Um, and uh, yeah, sometimes it's not not always possible to, to be aware of everything. So if you're new to ZNML, probably um, after you do a pip install of ZNML, uh, ZNML Go is probably the um, uh, first command you might want to, to try. That'll launch you kind of on a little journey where you uh, get an exposure to um, a kind of a quick start pipeline um, and how stacks work, how, how all of the different pieces of, of XML work. So that's probably probably the place to, to start if you've really done uh, nothing so far with XML. Uh, then after that, you might want to check out the, our Zenbytes repository. Um, so this is a, um, a kind of a mini course uh, which will take you through uh, some of the basics of, um, of ML ops as well as XML uh, and introduce you introduces you to some of the basic um, stack components and the features of how ZML works. So that's probably uh, also that's something you can do in an afternoon, um, uh, learn about both MLOps and ZML. And we also have a really extensive do documentation. We spend a lot of time and effort um, making sure that things are properly explained um, uh, and clear um, all of the different pieces of, of what we built. Um, in particular, I really recommend you checking out uh, this thing called the component gallery section. Uh, once you've covered the basics um, and you have an idea about what kinds of things you want to bring into what you're uh, what you're doing for the competition, um, each in each of the different stack components in the um, documentation has kind of full information for how you use the built-in integrations, how you add your own um, uh, custom integration, uh, and so on. Um, so definitely check out the, the documentation. Um, as I said before, Slack is um, yeah, Slack is a place where uh, generally people kind of come to for for support for uh, issues with your pipelines and so on. You have the competition twenty two uh, channel as well as the general channel um, where 
um, yeah, it's always worth uh, searching to see whether someone has had your uh, your kind of question before, particularly over the next week um, uh, as we um, iron out things relating to the release last week, um, you might find other people have had similar problems. Um, and so, yeah, that, that, that might be helpful for you. As Hunter mentioned, uh, we um, uh, you may run into things which, which don't work quite the way that uh, you think they might um, on our um, GitHub, um, uh, GitHub repository in our issues. You can file uh, a bug report. Um, we, we encourage you to do that. Um, uh, when you when you run into things, and please do give as much information as possible, and we'll try to uh, to get around to helping you. But um, yeah, quite often people will first um, mention something in Slack, and then uh, if it's apparent, it's it's a kind of a more something more systemic or something that that needs fixing. Uh, then we'll encourage you to 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 file a bug bug report there. And um, I guess would also uh, be remiss in mentioning that you know um, you might come across things that you're working on. Um, Certain stack components or extensions of things that that we're already doing in ZML, and you might want to contribute those back. Perhaps a new integration with uh, a particular tool that you you enjoy using. Um, we welcome those contributions. We've got a, a kind of pretty full fledged uh, contribution guide uh, over on um, on our GitHub repository. Um, it's pretty easy to find. It's on the main readme. Uh, you'll find it there. We also have a um, uh, an extra repository called Stack Rece um, MLOps Stacks, um, and this is where you find stack recipes. This is a growing library of ways to deploy um, infrastructure and stacks um, uh, that relate to to MLOps, um, and it's super helpful with with ZML. Can help you jump through a whole bunch of hoops in terms of setting up um, cloud deployed uh, infrastructure. Um, and uh, obviously, this is another thing where if you have um, other ideas for stack recipes and things that you want to contribute back, you're welcome to do that. But we think this will sa probably save you a lot of time, depending on um, uh, where you end up um, working on in terms of your, uh, your cloud stack. Um, we did put out a, a kind of a question in the initial form uh, as to whether people kind of re required uh, compute credits. Um, there was a mix of opinions there. Uh, we did try to see if we could figure out a way to, um, yeah, kind of provide this. Um, unfortunately, that didn't really work out. But we do know that all of the um, certainly the big three, uh, AWS, Azure, and uh, Google Cloud (GCP). Um, all offer um, free credits for uh, new customers and new signups. Um, so we would encourage you to um, to basically create new accounts, um, uh, and they give you uh, a few hundred dollars usually uh, in in free credits, um, which which you can use on your your cloud compute. And remember, one of the criteria of the competition as well is cost effectiveness. Um, so um, yeah, and let us know if you have have problems um, kind of um, getting that to work. We can. We can uh, discuss that. Um, let us know on Slack. Um, so yeah, and uh, one of the kind of core, the core and key key things I, I imagine points of contact with between you and the ZML team is going to be these office hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, where you can talk about what you're building, the challenges that you're having. Um, possibly we can kind of iterate over ideas and things that you're working on. But so for for week one, um, uh, obviously you're free to do um, and approach the competition. Take it in in, in whatever direction you like. Um, I kind of put some suggestions here, and this presentation will be available as a PDF on the information page shortly after this call. Um, suggest maybe you, if you don't yet have a team and you want to work with some other people, um, uh, get together, use the the competition channel on Slack. Um, discuss the idea, come up with a plan. Uh, obviously, there it's a fairly open-ended um, uh, space in terms of what kinds of problems you might want to solve. Um, so take a bit of time to think about that. Think about relevant data sets, um, and obviously, you know, it would make sense to get to know ZML at this point. Uh, get a basic end-to-end -end pipeline running, maybe something that approximates the kind of thing that you might end up wanting to do. Um, in all of the resources above that I, I, I mentioned, there's lots of uh, example pipelines uh, and things um, that you might want to check out, which will kind of get you started or give you a template to, to get going. Um, and yeah, think about what the final pipeline might might look like. Um, obviously, also in this first, uh, first week, I'd uh, suggest you set up your cloud accounts. Some of these um, 
uh, cloud companies um, maybe take a, a day or two to approve your approve your account, uh, depending on what country you're from, and so on. So it, it makes sense to to get that done early. Um, and yeah, we encourage you to 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 share your process uh, progress on social media with the month of MLOps uh, hashtag uh, wherever wherever you feel comfortable doing that. And yeah, uh, I guess we'd open it up to the to to the floor now. To see if there are any questions or or comments. Um, and otherwise, yeah, I'm I'm really happy to to see so many people here and to just get started um, with the competition and to to see see what comes out of it. If you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself or post a question in the uh, in the chat. Hi, guys. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, I was wondering about the submissions. Uh, so when we submit our project at the end, will we then receive the feedback on it as part of this uh, ceremony at the end that you were mentioning? Or are we going to get an email sort of describing the feedback for a project? Like, how can we, how should we think about that? So yes, the 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 feedback will come. There will be some kind of written feedback uh, at the end, uh, regardless of um, uh, of whether you win or not. Um, the extent to which we cover everyone in the fin final ceremony depends a little bit, I guess, on how many submissions there are. Um, uh, remember, there are only only five judges, and at least currently there are two hundred uh, two hundred teams. Um, so that would be a long call if everyone received uh, live feedback on their projects. Um, but yeah, there will be some kind of written feedback uh, at the uh, at the very end, and obviously um, the the winners will get get kind of uh, slightly more detailed uh, feedback, and the judges will explain you know what attracted them to the particular projects. Awesome, thanks. Any other questions? Anything that wasn't clear? OK, yeah. I think we have one more question uh, from Telmo. Uh, hi, I'm not sure the project I'm thinking about would be a right fit for the competition. Um, can ZNML be helpful in this case? Is there someone from the ZNML team I could exchange some ideas with? So I think they're not sure whether ZNML is the right framework to solve the particular problem that they would like to tackle. Alex? Yeah, so I would definitely, um, well, firstly, I would encourage you to to uh, share questions like that in the uh, in the Slack. Uh, obviously, we can't give um, kind of unique feedback to every single person because then that gives individual teams uh, an unfair advantage, I guess. Um, but we do encourage those kinds of questions if you have a kind of a general way of phrasing it, um, if that's possible. Um, but yeah. Uh, let us know in Slack, um, and um, we're we're happy to to exchange ideas on that uh, for sure. Yeah, I would just add to that. I mean, if if there is some corner case where you think ZML um, does not fit into the um, into the idea you're having, please just write about it as on Slack. I'm sure there is a way to sort of cast that question to to the realms of ZML because ZML does cover a lot of the ML landscape. So you should be well within the reach of of, uh, of ZML adding value to uh, the particular problem that you've chosen to tackle. So again, as Alex said, just write open on Slack. Ideas don't win the competition, execution does. So we we do we do encourage people to share ideas and, and talk openly about it. Great, um, and yeah, in general, you know, we're here to 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 support you um, and to kind of make things easier for you where we can. Uh, so just um, let us know, and, and and we'll see see what we can do. So I think maybe that's it for for questions for today. Um, yeah. As Hamza said, like let the Slack be your uh, communication uh, entry point for for any questions and things. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for for coming. Um, and it was great to to see you all. And yeah, really looking forward to see what uh, what comes of the competition. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Cheers, guys. Ciao.